Hello and welcome to this lesson for OCR A-Level Physics in the Module 3 Forces and Motion in the Subtopic of Materials and on the concept of Young Modulus. So in today's lesson we're going to look at the Young Modulus and we're going to try to understand and calculate the Young Modulus. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define and calculate the stress and strain acting on a material, define and calculate the Young Modulus of a material and derive the Young Modulus from a stress strain graph. So in today's lesson we're going to be looking at the following parts of the OCR A-level physics specification. Stress, strain and ultimate tensile stress, strength, the Young modulus, techniques and procedures used to determine the Young modulus for a metal, and stress strain graphs for typical ductile, brittle and polymeric uh, materials. So we can deduce many properties of a material from a force extension graph. We know that the gradient of a force extension graph is the spring constant, which is sometimes called the stiffness whilst the area under the straight line section of a force extension graph is the energy stored in a material due to deformation. However, the concept of a stiffness and force extension graph can change depending on the dimensions of the material, because the amount of deforming force that needs to be applied on a material to cause an extension is dependent on the dimensions of the material. Whilst the amount of extension that is produced by a deformant force acting on a material is also dependent on the dimensions of the material. So whilst we know that the gradient is the stiffness of the material, it is fundamentally dependent on the dimensions of that object that we're looking at. Now we need to be able to quantify a value for a material that represents its ability to deform regardless of the dimension of the object's shape. So instead, we need to use a quantity of a material that represents its ability to deform regardless of the dimensions of its shape. Now this is achieved by looking at the stress placed on an object and the strain that it causes. So when we consider a stress strain graph, the stress is the amount uh, placed on a material which is actually going to be considered independent to the dimensions of the material, whilst the strain produced on a material can be considered independent on the dimensions of the material. Now for a stress strain graph, the gradient of the line produced is not the stiffness, but rather it is the Young modulus. So this tells us that the Young modulus is independent of the dimensions of the material. So the Young modulus of a material is consistent regardless of its dimensions. So therefore it's an absolute material quantity. Now the Young modulus of a material can be calculated by measuring both the stress and the strain of a material. Because the Young modulus is the stress divided by the strain for that material. So we can consider it to be a measure of the stiffness of a material. And it is used by engineers to make sure materials can withstand sufficient forces in different situations. So just to clarify, stress is considered a more absolute quantity than just force. And strain is a more absolute quantity that it considers extension. So we know that tensile stress is the force applied on material when considering the area over which it is applied for applied to. Now it can also be referred to as the deformant pressure acting on an object. So the tensile stress is the pressure a material is under which is the force per unit area. So stress in newtons per metre squared or pascals is the force in newtons over the area it's applied to a metre squared. Now once a material is put under stress, it will show a strain. Now a strain is a measure of how much the material has extended based on its original length due to the stress that was acting on it. Now just to clarify, it doesn't matter if the forces are compressive or tensile. It just means that we tend to have tensile forces as positive values and compressive forces as negative values. Now the strain is the measurement of how much a material is stretched. So stress pulling on a wire causes strain. So strain is a ratio between the original length of the material and the amount is extended by. Now strain has no units as it's the two units of length, the um, extension and the original length, cancel each other out. Now we know strain is the extension divided by the original length and sometimes we give strain as a percentage. So the Young modulus is an absolute measurement of the stiffness of a material. It tells us how much a material will extend under a given pressure. 
So we can say that the Young modulus is the stress divided by the strain. Now we know stress is force over area and strain is extension over original length. So we can rewrite this out as the Young modulus is the force times by the original length over the extension times by the area. Now it has units of newtons per meter squared or the Pascal. Now it has the same units as stress since strain has no units itself. Now below are some examples of the size of the Young modulus of different materials. Now just note the orders of magnitude involved. So DNA is about 10 to the 8 pascals, dry spaghetti is 10 to the 9 pascals, cotton is 10 times 10 to the 10 pascals, the cell walls of plants are 10 to the 11 pascals, and carbon fullerene nanotubes are 10 to the 12 pascals. Now the stiffer the object, the higher its Young modulus. Now to calculate the Young modulus of a material, you must measure the stress and the strain of the material in experimentation. So to analyse this further, you can place the results in a stress-strain graph. Now we can draw stress-strain stress graphs as follows. Stress goes on the y-axis and strain on the x-axis. Now as we know, gradient is y over x so in this case the gradient is stress over strain which as we said before is the young modulus now note you can only calculate the young modulus as the gradient of the straight line section of the graph so you can only calculate the young modulus when a material is exhibiting elastic behavior so you can only calculate the young modulus when a material is below its limit of proportionality when the material is following Hooke's law. Now, stiff materials will have a stiff gradient because they have a high Young modulus. Now, we can also think about the area under the line as well. So the area under the line of a stress strain graph is gonna be a half base times by height because it forms a right angle triangle. So therefore, it's a half stress times by strain. So we know it's a half times by force over area times by extension over length which when you work it all through, is equal to energy divided by volume. So the area under the line of a stress strain graph is the strain energy, the energy stored per unit volume in the material. So you can also think of it as the amount of strain energy in one meter cubed of the material. Now if we look at the following stress strain graph, we can see here that material A has the larger Young modulus because its stress strain graph has the steeper gradient. So this means that the value for stress strain is greater for A, so it means that A is the stiffest material available out of the three. Now we can use a stress strain graph to determine many values about a material. So you can see here a typical stress strain graph for a metal material such as copper. So this is a ductile material as it undergoes a high plastic deformation before it breaks. Now we can work out many values from the stress strain graph. The first one is the ultimate tensile stress. So the highest value of stress on the graph you can see is the ultimate tensile stress or UTS. This is the maximum stress a material can withstand and sometimes it's referred to as the strength of the material. Now engineers must consider the UTS when designing a structure. They need to make sure that the stress on the material will not reach the UTS when conditions change. Now the next thing you can think about is the breaking point. So the last value of strain on the graph is known as the breaking point. This is when the bonds between the molecules separate completely and the material snaps. Now again, engineers must consider the breaking point when designing a structure. They need to make sure that the stress on a material will not reach the breaking points when the conditions change. So we tend to say that strong materials have a high UTS and a high breaking point. Also, just note that the stress value at the point of fracture at the breaking point is also known as the breaking strength of the material. The next thing we can think about is the yield. Now the yield point is the point where the line dips. It shows the material giving. This means the material has become weaker and can't stand as much stress as it could previously. So at the yield point, the material starts to stress without any extra load.
Now, this is the stress at which a large amount of plastic deformation takes place with a constant or reduced load. And in fact, there are two sections to the yield point. There's the weakening and the flow. So the weakening is when the material weakens and suddenly stretches, whilst the flow is when there's a large strain achieved as the cross-sectional area of the material decreases rapidly. So the material fundamentally after this point becomes longer, it becomes thinner, so we call this process necking. Now the other two points you've got to be aware of are the elastic limit and the limit of proportionality. The elastic limit is the point where the material will no longer go back to its original shape after the force has been removed. The limit of proportionality is when the force and the extension are no longer proportional. Now for most materials this is not the same point. For most materials the limit of proportionality is slightly before the elastic limit. So at the limit of proportionality, the material stops obeying Hooke's law, but would still return to its original shape if the stress acted on it was removed. But after the elastic limit, the material would no longer return to its original shape once the stress is removed. Now, the elastic region is the region of the graph up until the elastic limit. In this region, the material will return to its original shape when the applied force is removed. Now, the plastic region is the region of the graph after the elastic limit. In this region, the material has deformed permanently and will not return to its original shape when the applied force is removed. Now, that's for a ductile material. Now, a brittle material will have the following stress-strain graph. It will obey Hooke's law at lower stresses, so you would observe a straight line through the origin. But when the stress reaches a certain point, the material will suddenly fracture and break, so it doesn't have much plastic deformation. Now examples of this include things like chocolate bars, glass and pottery. So you can see here an example of, um, of a, a stress strain graph for two brittle materials. Now for a brittle material you've got to remember that the ultimate tensile strength is the same as the breaking strength because it breaks before it starts to show any plastic deformation. Now a polymeric uh, material, so it's like a polymer, will have the following stress strain graph. So the polymeric material will stretch a great deal before breaking, but will exhibit plastic deformation as shown by the curved line. Now rubber will have the following stress strain graph. Now rubber will stretch a great deal before breaking, but will exhibit elastic deformation. You can see this because on the unloading curve of your stress strain graph, the line returns back through the origin, so when the force has been removed, it returns to its original shape. So to summarise what we've looked at in today's lesson, we've looked at stress, strain and ultimate tensile strength. We've looked at Young's modulus equaling tensile strain over stress, and then the techniques and procedures used to determine the Young modulus for a metal. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to define and calculate stress strain acting on a material, define and calculate the Young modulus of a material, and derive the Young modulus from a stress strain graph. So thank you very much for watching this video for the A-level OCR specification for physics in the topic of forces and, mo and motion in the subtopic of materials and on the concept of the Young modulus. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a lovely day.